Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I am so excited to show this game to you. I have not seen it. It is game three of the bronze match for third place in the 2022 War of the Ring World Tournament between Romp Steel and Vase. And um, I, you know, the first two games were great. I did videos on them. Please watch them if you'd like. And I just can't wait to to see this game. So I'm going to give commentary as we watch. I've never seen it before. And let's just jump in. So because it's game three and we have to have a decisive match and we know that Shadow has a slight advantage in the base game, For the, the rules for this tournament are that the, the free people player in the tiebreaker game, which is what this is, gets two action tokens. And the higher seed from the Swiss section, which is Romp Steel, gets to decide if they would prefer to play free people or Shadow, and Romp Steel chose Shadow. So at least for, for this person, for this matchup, they thought that even with two action tokens, Shadow is still favored in the base game. So it'll be interesting to see how this game plays out. We can see that they've drawn their cards, Dane Ironfoot's Guard and Axe and Bow. If you don't know the action token rules, I've included a link and I include a link in all the videos to, to the rules for the action token. So you can look in the description. Let's see what Shadow got. Shadow got Worn with Sorrow and Toil and Mustering of Long Planned War. So Mustering of Long Planned War, I would say not particularly useful card effect, but Worn with Sorrow and Toil is great to get early because you can pull out, you know, four, possibly even more cards from, from free people. So that's quite nice to get early. I think free people would be happy to see Dan Ironfoot's card. That's always a, you know, any playable strategy card early on is great because you can cycle cards with Palantir effects. And Axe and Bow is also perfectly nice. Um, good against Foul Thing to be able to avoid the one tiles and uh, generally just soaks up one corruption. So, all right, let's see what happens. Um, all right, that was so, so interesting. So Shadow allocated no eyes and rolled zero and free people got two movement. So, um, you know, that's about what we expect for movement, but, um, you know, shadow, um, that's the risk really of not rolling any, any eyes, not allocating any eyes. And, um, yeah, this is going to be interesting to see as free people. Would you consider using a ring for one of these musters? I would certainly think about it because to be able to get your third movement guaranteed safe through Moria uh, could be nice. The cost of a ring, given that Shadow has, you know, it's a nice, perfectly nice start for Shadow. But, um, you know, what are you going to do with all those Palantirs? All right. I would think that as Shadow, we would be drawing a couple cards. Obviously, we want to play War. I would think we would play Warren with Siren Toil, but maybe with the Fellowship getting such a good start, it won't even be worth it. I, I would still probably plan on playing Warren with Siren Toil, but I could draw two cards. I would at least start by drawing two strategy cards and, and seeing what I get. All right, Free People starts off just playing one. It's fine. You know, I don't know. Are you worried about um, Lidless Eye? Maybe, I guess. Uh, this does turn on any of the Nazgul movement cards that require the Fellowship to be one or higher. It, this is super minor, but... All right, so they go ahead and move. I think that makes sense. Um, all right, and then Shadow draws, and they get New Powers Rising. That's a beautiful strategy card to get early game. This is really going to allow them to go into Rohan fast and turn on the Witch King. They got enough musters. They have a good Palantir to play. So this is pretty strong. At this point, either I would consider one Palantir for Warren with Sorrow and Toil and one Palantir for New Powers Rising, or maybe just uh, draw another strategy card and don't even worry about Warren with Sorrow and Toil. Um, th this is a situation where you can get Saruman before the end of the turn because Free People doesn't have a Will of the West. So you're not really worried about a turn one Gandalf, which can happen if you get Sar Saruman too early on, on turn one, but this is not a situation where you need to worry about that. Okay, so Isengard to war, Saruman shows up, new power is rising, all of this makes sense, and then the Fellowship moves again, and now we're moving. So that's interesting. So Shadow moved armies toward Gondor. Um, I mean, we don't know for sure that it's towards Gondor, but, you know, I think that makes sense. Um, and we still have this Palantir. So I think if I were a Shadow and I intend to play Warren with Sauron Toil, fine, it's fine. But if I plan to 
you know, draw another strategy card, I would have drawn that first before moving my armies around. I don't know that it would have affected much, but it would just be more information. Um, and also, I, I don't know, am I, I feel sort of inclined with, with new powers rising to go after... Um, to go after either the elves. I mean, this is eight eight regulars right here. They could go after they could go after Lorien, um, or I could potentially just bring these bring these south and then plan on just completely rolling over rolling over Rohan. And then the last thing that I would consider with this muster is just getting Sauron to war. I know it's um, you know an army movement, and it's nice to be able to do army moves, but um, I'm definitely not guaranteed to get two musters next round, right? So it's going to be it's going to be seven dice, and what are the chances of getting at least two fives if you're rolling seven dice, right? Because there are two sides that have musters. Um, you know, you can probably get two fives, but you might not. So um, yeah, I think it's like what it's like twenty or thirty percent in that range that you would only get one, one muster next round. And so given this early start in Rohan, I would be inclined to potentially just try and take out Rohan early, but then I would also like the benefit of a turn two witch King if I'm going to do that. So, um, anyway, that's, that's a long digression, but this, when you get three musters on turn one, do you end up using that? Uh, clearly you're going to get Saruman, but then do you use that third muster to get Sauron, uh, Sauron to war or not? Um, and I, and I tend to do that, but it does, it does depend. Um, the other thing to think about is, you know, if I had drawn this strategy card and it was something like day without dawn, which is unlikely, but if it were day without dawn, then that also might encourage me to go a little bit harder toward musters so that I can get the South rounds and Easterlings toward war also. And then I can actually potentially stop a Gandalf if, or, or a Strider being, uh, crowned. Um, you know, these are really what if scenarios, but, um, you know, it's a final game of a, a you know, third place tournament in the world tournament. So, and by the way, um, that the world tournament had 128 players this, uh, year, which is by far the record that we've ever had. So, um, for anybody who's new to the game or getting involved, like this is a great way of playing. Everybody is welcome. Um, and the community I think is, is, is really welcoming. So I, I hope that if you're a new player and getting into the game that you, you, uh, join the discord and, and start playing some games in any case, let's move on to what happened. So they, they chose to move armies around. Obviously that, that can make sense too. All right. Uh, free people musters Gondor. Okay. looks like Gondor is coming towards war and um and then so shadow moves uh these armies into minus morgul one army movement into minus morgul okay and then yeah so we get a ring and i think that makes a lot of sense guaranteed safe movement past you know into moria um i think is worth that early ring and um now so shadow does play warren of sorrow and toil okay so they're still going to put up some fight for the fellowship even though fellowship got off to a good early start we're gonna um shadow's gonna put some pressure on them so okay that makes sense free people do have the opportunity right now to use um an action uh token i don't see why they would but they could all right so um all right, and look at this. So Shadow drew Foul Thing from the Deep, and um, free people have Axe and Bow. So this is these are these are sort of the sort of interplays that you get with the cards. And the reason why this is significant is because four of the hunt tiles are ones, and with Foul Thing from the Deep, you have to lose a random companion. And so when you're playing Foul Thing from the Deep, the ideal tile is actually a low corruption tile, a one, because they have to lose a random companion, and then you might get um, Boromir or you know any of the level two companions, or possibly even Strider um, or maybe. Gandalf, even if Gandalf's still in the fellowship at the time. Um, and then you're basically getting a two, two corruption for one corruption tile, or even three corruption if you happen to get Strider. And if you have um, Axe and Bow out, then you are allowed to use Axe and Bow before you take the random casualty from Foul Thing. And so Axe and Bow in particular is, um, you know, useful against uh, Foul Thing, which I, I feel like is also just this really cool, nice thematic um thematic thing too okay bilbo song a little early for that help and look for it probably a little early for that also but no quarters is certainly a playable um playable effect and um shadow lengthens is always nice to just get your armies in the right position this could really help the um 
Rohan attack going on. This is this is a pretty pretty strong start for Shadow, but also a strong fellowship start for the free people. All right. Um, let's see what happens. Shadow must allocate one eye and they roll four more. Oh my God. Okay. So obviously that's more eyes than, um, Shadow wants to roll, um, by a lot, but they did get, um, at least three attacks and they got two musters. So, you know, they're not getting, I, I don't see how they're getting the Witch King this round. Um, yeah, they're not getting the Witch King this round, but at least those are three useful, uh, dice. That's... Yeah, but not a great roll. All right, and then let's see what uh, what free people roll. Okay, so, you know, this is not what they want. They're getting too many musters. Um, you know, I think free people wants to keep making progress, and they would have really enjoyed a um, some other movement, uh, like one character and the Will of the West, because then they could kill off Gandalf and get... Um, and get him back on turn two, which would be pretty nice. Um, you know, this is interesting. I don't know exactly what I would do as um, free people. Do I want to use up a second ring on turn two? If you can get Gandalf turn two, that's pretty great. And your chances of getting hit against five eyes is pretty high. So it may be worth using a second ring to move and then use this Will of the West to get Gandalf. That's what I would really be thinking about. And I don't really love these musters. I, I don't really need them. I would probably play Dane Ironfoot's Guard. Um, maybe Axe and Bow, but with Warren and Sorrow and Toil, I, I, it's not really worth it. Because Warren with Sorrow and Toil, you can get rid of a character event card um, from, the, from the table also. Which is important to remember. That's an important part of Warren with Sorrow and Toil. Um, and so... I wouldn't, and I and I want to be losing Gandalf as a casualty, so I, I probably wouldn't bother with either of these, and I would just I would just cycle um, Dane Ironfoot's guard to try and get to other strategy cards that will help reinforce the locations that Shadow's attacking, and I have these two musters anyway, so um, maybe I'll get something that will be useful. So I think my plan as free people would be play um, Dane Ironfoot's guard and then use a ring to move the fellowship with one of the muster dice, hope to kill off Gandalf, bring him back with, um, with the will of the West and then use this muster for something, maybe the card that I drew, or maybe just, um, you know, elves or who knows what. Um, and, and the reason why I'm talking through these start of turn things is uh, I feel like that's often the practice that I do as a player. When I, I roll, I want to think about my plan for the whole turn, um, have a sense of it, and then sort of execute it. If you just think one action at a time, um, that's okay. But uh, I think try, trying to think ahead for, for one turn after you see the action dice and you see your cards can be a good, um, a good approach. So, all right, let's see what actually happens. And for Shadow, I don't know. I'd just be getting armies into position more. All right. So um, Dan Ironfoot's guard. All right. That's cool. And then they redraw Wisdom of Alaron. Fine. Nothing special at this point, given that um, given that I you know have these musters anyway, and I don't really want to put Gondor to war, facilitating the Witch King. So all right. Moving armies, moving armies. We're going to attack Lorien. And uh, that seems good. And then... Um, probably will end up on the spot that the fellowship is going to end up on if they get revealed. So it's nice to have armies in Dimmerald Dale. Um, Shadow uh, free people did exactly as we suspected. They used their second ring, move the fellowship against five dice, but they get missed. So they're not getting Gandalf turn two. But the upside is they moved a fourth time and they didn't get hit <laughs> against five eyes. So I don't know if Shadow is actually happy or sad about that. It's kind of nice not to see Gandalf turn two. Um, but obviously you don't want to make the Fellowship making too much progress. So I don't know. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, Shadow is sad because, or Free People is sad because, Vase is sad because they didn't get to kill off Gandalf. And uh, Shadow says, yeah, kind of bad news for both of us. So nobody is particularly happy about that result. All right. Shadow continues to move and gets um, their armies in position outside of um, Lorien. But uh, Sauron is not yet at war. So they're not going to be able to attack into Lorien yet. And now this is kind of an interesting situation because it's possible with these three remaining dice and the action token for free people to get elves to war before Shadow has a chance to attack. And um, it does turn on the Witch King turn three, but 
you would get to you would get to muster at least once and possibly twice unless um, Shadow uses a ring right now to get Sauron to war. So um, you know you could put it on put it on a really strong defense of Lori in there. Um, I might be tempted to do that just to just to slow down Shadow military. Um, it sort of would potentially have the effect of slowing down Shadow's desire to roll into Rohan. And I kind of, as free people, want a little more time to draw into some Rohan reinforcement cards. Um, I don't love using a token this early, but defending um, Lorien is, is valuable. So, um, yeah, I might, be really, I might be really tempted to do that. And then that also lets me um, put up a nice defensive woodland realm if at some point um, Southrons and Easterlings come up there. So... Um, yeah, let's see what, let's see what, um, free people do. They end up mustering elves, one toward war. Shadow just moves an army, which is what I would do also as Shadow. I wouldn't spend a ring here, but now free people knows they can get elves to war and, sh and Sauron and Shadow will be two actions away from attacking into Lorien. Um, so that could be good. All right. They muster, they use the, they use an action token. It doesn't really matter to use the action token now or later. You can do it as free people, even when you have zero action dice. So just to clarify that, um, even if you have zero action dice, you can still use a token. The, the round only ends when both players pass in a row. Okay. And then they get elves all the way to war. Okay. And I, I think that makes a lot of sense. They're going to be able to put up a really strong defensive Lorian. Okay. Um, so let's see, Shadow draws um, Threats and Promises and Black Captain Commands. Um, I don't usually love Threats and Promises, but this is a situation where potentially, um, no, it doesn't make sense. Okay, uh, and Black Captain Commands is obviously great. Uh, let's see, Shadow get, or Free People get Thrandall's Archers, which is nice, always nice to see that, um, and I will go alone. Um, what's interesting about I will go alone here is that if you declare the Fellowship, from um from Rivendell into Dimrald Dale, then I will go alone get Strider into Minas Tirith in a single die. Um I don't know that you want to put Strider in Minas Tirith right now with a single die. Um but it could be interesting. So that's something to think about. And with Worn with Sorrow and Toil in play, it sort of gives a little extra incentive to get companions out of the fellowship faster. Um, it does feel like free people are um, sort of trying to run the fellowship and then get Gandalf and leave Strider in, but we'll see. All right, let's see what they roll. Um, and do they declare? So they are, they are not declaring. They're staying, they're staying in Rivendell. It's interesting, you know, moving out obviously puts, makes you susceptible to a lot of, a lot of guards, including, um, foul thing, which we know Shadow has. Um, you are risking the extra tile for Mori at some point, but I think, uh, free people actually are kind of excited to try and kill off Gandalf. So um, getting the extra tile draw from Moria just gives you extra protection in case your reveal is the tile that gets drawn. All right. Um, one eye allocated and one rolled and then a whole bunch of movement. So, um, you know, it seems like free people are just going to run with the fellowship and uh, Shadow is going to try and do some military. It is a little sad for uh, free people that they only got one muster because they could have had time to do two into into Lorien before this army came in, but um, one one is still okay. Um, it is a little bit of a tricky situation because also it looks like Minas Tirith um, may be besieged, and they had bothered to muster Gondor once, so that when Osgiliath gets attacked, they would have time to muster an elite into Minas Tirith, but now they only have this single muster this round, and so Shadow can put both Minas Tirith and Lorien under siege. That said, as free people, I don't know that I'm that upset about um, Minas Tirith going under siege. Hopefully one of these regulars from Asgiliath can retreat into Minas Tirith, and then otherwise I can muster up in Dol Amroth before Corsairs come. And um, then, you know, that's that's at least something. Makes it harder for Shadow to get all, um, all 10 victory points. All right, so let's see. Um, Free people starts by passing, sure, because you only have one muster. If you had two musters, you would want to muster into Lorien um, and then um, have its shadow take an action and then be able to muster a second time into Lorien. And I guess free people decided very reasonably they didn't want to use up their last ring to turn a character into a muster. Um, 
usually we want to use rings to turn um, non-characters into characters to be able to move the fellowship. All right, so they muster into Lorien, Witch King shows up. That's, you know, I think that's a good practice just in case there's some sort of, um, you know, uh, field battle. I, I don't think that free people would ever do that, but but why not? Um, you know, the only reason why not would be something like the Red Arrow, which requires, um, you know, factions to be, or Gondor to be active, but um, they don't have any musters. Their free people doesn't have musters. That's not happening anyway. So, all right, that's definitely the right play for Shadow. It's a, it's minor, but it's 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 the right it's the right order to do it in. Um, and now look at this. Okay, so the defense of the elves, um, actually scared off the Witch King from even bothering to attack Lorien, and now the Witch King is redirecting and going, um. And going south, um, I guess, to take out Helm's Deep really easily. Um, it's a little surprising to me. I probably would have tried my hand at Lorien. Um, I could still I could still take that out. But especially because I have a shadow, I have the reinforcements. I have shadow lengthened so I can muster up in Moria and, and then quickly get to Lorien. And and those are two useful two useful victory points. And I have Devilry of Orthanc, so you know I have some useful combat cards that I can cycle. I have Musterings uh, of a Long Planned War. Um, you know I respect going after something like Helm's Deep, and they can reach it. But yeah, that's interesting. I, that's not a play that I would make, but I, but I think it's a really interesting play. So, all right, so we'll see what happens. They get, um, they're now merging up armies um, in in Gondor, I mean in Mordor, to, I guess, bring these Morinon and Gorgoroth armies into, into play, or at least thinking about it. Um, I also wonder, the, the thing about Dimril Dale and Parth Celebrant is, I guess the, the Fellowship could end up potentially in Parth Celebrant if they move and get revealed. So maybe Parth Celebrant is nice for that reason. But I think you can go to South Anduin Vale and it doesn't it doesn't slow the fellowship down. Right? This is the same distance. From South Anduin Vale, it's one, two, three, four, five. And from Parth Celebrant, it's one, two, three, four, five, the same. So um having armies in Parth Celebrant doesn't actually help for purposes of hunting the fellowship. So all right. And also another thing that's interesting here is that Shadow, I mean, free people now can feel really good about not even having to use two musters into Lorien to scare off the Witch King. Even a single muster was enough to do that. So um, well done, elves. All right. Um, free people starts moving. What else can they do? Uh, they get missed. And um, yep, here comes Shadow down into um, Rohan. And free people moves again. They get hit this time. An eye. So they got revealed. Uh, they're at six movement. I think at this point you... Do you lose Gandalf here? Uh, the hunt pool is uh, six tiles that are more efficient corruption loss. Uh, four tiles that are exactly the same. And five tiles that just prevent you from losing Gandalf at all. I think at this point in the game you're perfectly happy to lose Gandalf. Uh, and you just, um, you know, want to roll a will of the West. So I would expect Gandalf to go here. Gandalf goes and Fellowship shows up in Western Brownlands and then a zero reveal. All right. So things are going pretty well for the Fellowship and it looks like, um, Warren with Sarantoil got Bilbo Song, which was certainly the best card to hope for, um, for Shadow to, that Shadow should be happy with that. I mean, they don't know what they got, but um, that's the most relevant card. I think that free people are just not too worried about corruption right now. So, all right. Um, and now, and now this is interesting. Do you, seeing, seeing Rohan getting attacked, um, do you bring... Do you use your last um, character die to move these units from Fords of Eisen into Helm's Deep? Um, it's not really enough to put up much of a fight, but it's certainly more of a fight than a single regular. 
Um, I don't know. We know that we can hide next round using Strider's ability anyway. So I, I it's, it doesn't really hurt me to use this character die now to move these armies. I don't know exactly what I would do. It looks like Shadow is going for these 10 victory points, take, taking out Rohan, plus taking out Gondor, and then two more from somewhere. I think those two more from somewhere will be kind of tricky to figure out. Um, maybe it's the Shire plus Dale. That could be an option. Um, certainly the benefit of bringing this large army down um, to Rohan is that now you have more than enough units here to over to really overwhelm Rohan. Um, and that's, and that's pretty cool. And hopefully you'll, a shadow, you'll have even leftovers and we'll be able to, um, you know, support the takeover of Gondor. And I also kind of like that, um, shadow is keeping Gondor away from war so that these, uh, settlements, uh, and strongholds can't muster up as, as free people, I would be thinking, okay, I better try and I might just use a muster to get Gondor toward war and, and try and muster into Dol Amroth. Um, yeah, it's interesting. We'll see. We'll see what free people does. All right. So they do go ahead and move into Helm's Deep. Yeah, that's reasonable. All right. And then Helm's Deep gets besieged with only three units. Very interesting. I'm a little surprised by that. I, w I guess we're planning on doing the two by two movement from Orthanc into Helm's Deep and then sending these armies down here. We want to make sure we take out, have enough to take out um, any stragglers in Eteris. Okay. Um, Shadow gets a very nice combat card. I don't know exactly what I would discard. I guess Threats and Promises, but these are all good cards. Um, maybe Desperate Battle? I, I don't know. Uh, all right. Free People gets rid of I Will Go Alone. They have Athelos, which is obviously nice. They can take some Corruption now. Um, all right. And Shadow gets rid of Threats and Promises. Makes sense. Red Arrow is certainly a nice, really nice card draw here. Um they can muster up an elite and a regular in um, Edoras and start to mess with, uh, just just make this harder to to take. Um, they could also potentially, depending on what they roll, save it for scouts as scouts. Um, Shadow allocates one eye, rolls one more. Free people. All right, so that's a very nice roll for free people. They have to be happy with that. They get their will of the west now, and um, they get some good movement. They can. They can either choose to reinforce Rohan with this muster, um, playing the red arrow, um, or they can use this muster to hide and then try and move twice with Strider. So given that I'm one, two, three, four away from um, Mordor, I would probably be more inclined to just let Rohan die, even though it's sad. Um I would I would just let Rohan die and then um, get two movement this turn instead of just one movement this turn because it's not even with five dice it's not that sure that I can get um, that I can get three movement in a turn and I would really like to make it into Mordor turn five if I can given how well things are going so that's my thinking as free people as shadow um, I would want to just clean up Rohan make sure I take out um, Fold and Edoras and then obviously take out um, Helm's Deep, and then move on to Gondor if I have extra time. And I would be cycling to get um, Corsairs if I can. And these musters are going to get the South Runs and Easterlings toward door. All right, so um, all right, so sh uh, Free People starts by hiding. I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, foul thing played, right? So I did not, I did not account for that. I think that's a really nice play on the part of. Um, shadow you have um a four out of 14 chance of revealing them almost a third of a chance uh to reveal them just straight out which is going to delay them by a whole movement given these dice and you have a one out of six chance if you get any of these any of the non-eyes non-zero of, of of pulling strider right here so um let's see what happens three all right so they didn't get revealed let's see who gets hit strider wow all right, so that's really exciting. Um, 
you know, that's, that's a great pull for shadow. It's a, it's just a good, good play. And, um, that does trigger worn with sorrow and toil. I guess the one saving grace for sh- for free people is that they, um, they got efficient corruption out of strider, but obviously as free people, you're, you're quite sad to see that. Um, all right. So Legolas becomes gu- guide. Let's see if they remember, they remember, um, Mornosaur and Toil, and then Athalos gets discarded. Feels fitting given that uh, Strider just got lost. Um, all right, so free people go ahead and move here. They get missed. That's at least a bit of um, fair luck for free people. And um, Southrons and Easterlings are going towards war, and the and the Fellowship is just running. All right, and they get missed. So that was two successful moves by free people, but obviously they're sad to have lost Strider. Um, Southrons and Easterlings are now at war, and um, I guess uh, it's interesting. Vase, who's playing free people, says, hmm, where to visit, meaning where is Gandalf going to show up? Um, is Gandalf going to show up in Lorien, in Fangorn? Um, it doesn't seem like uh, Shadow is particularly scared of Ents, um, so I don't know. Do you end up putting you know, Gandalf up in the Woodland Realm just to try and defend that, or Lorien maybe? All right, shows up in Grey Havens. This this helps for if uh, uh, free people get Fear Fire Foes or um, or Book of Mazarble. Given that I've already gotten Dane, um, this is really just for Fear Fire Foes. But you know, there's a chance you might draw it in the next couple turns, and then it would be nice to get the North to war. It does a good job defending um, Dew um, in the Shire, I guess. Yep. That's not crazy. I, I might have been tempted. I guess elves are at war. So you feel like wherever Shadow attacks first, you'll be able to muster up. It's reasonable. Okay. Um, Southrons and Easterlings come towards uh, Dol Amroth the hard way. And this is the drawback of not being able to get um, enough musters early. And um, we're just seeing the Shadow military roll pretty effectively. I'm a little surprised that we didn't take out Helm's Deep, but... Um, seeing this attack into Dol Amroth right here, I think is, is pretty nice. And that means that Shadow will be able to get Dol Amroth under siege, um, with Black Captain Commands and then Pilar, Gear, Lamadon, Dol Amroth. So that could be pretty nice for Shadow if they try that. Maybe they'll wait around and, and take care of, um, Rohan first. It's a little bit sad to move the Witch King away from, um, where they already kind of want to be. But it is a nice opportunity to try and get Dol Amroth under siege before Gondor musters up. All right. Um, Black Captain Commands comes into Pilar gear. Gondor goes to war. We get a confusion here. Okay, why not? Um, I certainly will be tempted to play scouts if I uh, make it to Lamadon. We'll see if they live. No, they don't live. And... Um, yeah, so two hits back to Shadow, but it's not going to be enough to take out um, what they need. And uh, yep, so they this is pretty this is pretty efficient of Shadow. Um, now Edoras is going to be surrounded, and this army will certainly be able to take them out. And uh, yeah, so we can see the effectiveness of this attack overall. Um, we're getting Helm's Deep. Shadow is getting Helm's Deep under siege with only three regulars in it. Edoras is going to be contained. All of Rohan is contained. And we're getting Dol Amroth under siege with only two two regulars in it. So unless free people top deck Kyrdan's ships um, or Amr Hill of Dol Amroth, um, Dol Amroth is, is going down. All right. And... Uh, Dol Amroth is now besieged. That's obviously not good news for free people. I don't know if they're going to be fast enough. It looks like these are a pretty quick eight victory points for Shadow. Um, it's not entirely clear where their last two will come from, but it's it's a close race. All right, so there are some Ents. Um, you know, probably that's just going to be used in... Um, it could be used to keep... Uh, keep at, like, possibly Edoras <laughs> could survive this attack from Westamnet. Um with those ends, that could be pretty cool. Oh, and they top deck Immerhill of Dol Amroth. So they top decked Immerhill of Dol Amroth. I don't know that that's enough to save Imr- uh, Dol Amroth, but it's certainly um, a nice card to see. 
the al shadow allocates one eye, rolls one more, and free people gets just the perfect roll for running. So um, with four character movement, it seems pretty darn likely that you're going to make it. Um, I think this was maybe a slight misplay that um, free people didn't... Uh, uh, um, Free people didn't declare the fellowship, but I guess they're thinking they're going to move anyway. So the Nazgul like um, repositioning cards are pretty minor and um, they want to be able to take a random companion and get a hobbit into, into Fangorn or Lorien. Uh, so that's the reason to stay in Western Brownlands instead of declaring um, to no man lands. So that, that's cool. Actually, it's, it's probably better to stay um, with two movement. So, all right, so as free people, you have this Will of the West, which can be a muster, a palantir. Um, do you play Emrahil of Dol Amroth? Do you play Red Arrow and hope for um, some some awesomeness with um, the Nameless Wood when when this army in East in Westamnet uh, tries to attack into Edoras? Uh, you could definitely cause some trouble with this army if they don't if they don't deal with it. You're gonna have trouble five hit points against seven. But ends can make a difference. I don't know. Um, do I feel like Imrahil of Dol Amroth is enough to hold um, Dol Amroth? Yeah, that's a tough call. What What would you play? What would I play? I think I would be most tempted to play... It's a really close call, but... Five hit points against ten. It's possible to hold out in Dol Amroth. Unlikely. I don't know. I really don't know what I would pick. I would play one of them. I, I, I would either play Red Arrow or Imrahil of Dol Amroth. Yeah, let's see what they do. All right, so they start by playing Imrahil of Dol Amroth. Okay. Let's see if it's enough for Imrahil for... Uh, to hold. All right, so Edoras goes down, and um, yeah, so they got one hit there. That would have been three hits. That would have been three hits right there. All right. Um, and now two hits back, and they don't get any, and then this army is done. Okay, so Edoras falls, and um, Free People moves, and then uh, Dol Amroth gets attacked, Mumakil against Valor. Okay. And uh, let's see what they get. Only one hit on the elephants. And in return, four hits. Wow. All right. So Free People has got to feel good about the Amrahil of Joel Amroth. And uh, that is going to be a serious problem for Shadow. Um, especially if Free People gets to Corsairs of Umbar. Um, it's possible that Shadow will draw into some reinforcement cards. It's possible that these six hit points can still take out those. Um, there's another Muma kill, so it could, could work. There's also Deadly Strife, so they have chances. All right, Fellowship gets hunted on their fourth movement. They get revealed. Um, I'm assuming that's going to be a random companion, but maybe you just lose, maybe you just lose Legolas because it's very efficient. Um... They're taking to Corruption because they don't want to lose the Ent card to Worn with Sorrow and Toil is my only analysis of that. Um, I would just not worry about that. I think it's better to... I mean, two Corruption's fine, but you're about to take even more, and I would just be okay with losing those cards. I just... Don't care that much about them. All right, so they end up in minus Morgul, and now a one. I guess I'll take another one. All right, so yeah, all right. Um, Shadow or, or um, Shadow gets some more armies moving. They're gonna. It looks like they're gonna try and. Um, circumvent Asgiliath to get Minas Tirith under siege. It may be the case that Free People is going to use their last ring to um, muster into Minas Tirith. They have been pretty low on 
um, on musters. Though they were high on musters early game, but once they got their people to war, they've been low on musters. All right. Um, so Shadow is is indeed circumventing um, Osgiliath, and um, it's interesting. Free people passed there. You could have potentially it was it would have been a little silly, but you could have moved uh, armies into Osgiliath and then moved armies back into Minas Tirith. Um, would have been kind of funny, but. All right, I don't know exactly what they're doing with these last character dice. Um, Minas Tirith goes under siege, and um, Free People draws a strategy card. Okay. And then we get uh, Shadows Gather into um, Dol Amroth to reinforce it. And Axe and Bow gets played. Dole Amroth. And the benefit of using the token there is that now free people will be able to use their last action die of the round safely to hide the fellowship. So I think that's a that was a very clever use of the, the timing of the action token. Do you draw a character card or a strategy card? I think either way is good. But um, all right. And now Shadow is completing the conquest of um, Dole Amroth. And um, we get an onslaught, and there we go. So, um, yeah, I think that I think that by playing Imrahel of Dol Amroth, you required Shadow to spend a good number of cards and time reinforcing it. So, I think that was a really nice nice play. Um, all right, and then the Fellowship hides. So, this is this is a pretty balanced game, I think. Uh, Shadow is gonna should be able to get two more victory points very quickly. Uh, I mean, four more victory points pretty quickly from both Minas Tirith and, um, and Helm's Deep. I just realized that uh, free people have um, help on look for. So that's, that's kind of fun to be able to um, do that. You could do, you could do a muster in Lasarnach. And then when Shadow presumably attacks Lasarnak to stop you from mustering there, you could play Scouts to retreat into Osgiliath. And then you could play um, Path of the Woeses to go into to attack into Minas Tirith and, and dish out some, some damage against that army. So um, if free people happen to get a bunch of musters when what they really want probably is to just run the Fellowship, um, they do have some tricks here with... Um, with help unlooked for, which is kind of fun. You don't often get to play help unlooked for, um, and I guess that's one of the minor drawbacks and risks of that Shadow was taking by um, going into Minas Tirith like this. The other thing that you could consider, which is kind of funny, is um, just a straight up Path of the Woeses, getting these two, um, like two regulars and an elite f from um, from within Helm's Deep out to Osgiliath, which could be fun. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see. Okay. One eye allocated two more rolled and then, um, a really nice balanced roll here from, from free people. Um, you know, you don't, you're a little nervous about the two, uh, wills of the West. So you're definitely going to want to use one first. Let's see what they do. I would think move the fellowship. You know, you do like these sort of tricky things with mustering and help and look for and all that, but really like just go destroy the ring. So I'm expecting this to be a move. Um, yep. A move. A zero reveal, perfectly fine. Um, and now let's see what Shadow does. Okay, they get Ring is Mine in, and I guess that's because they have both Ring is Mine and on the, on they went. Um, so that's kind of nice. And now Free People hides using a Will of the West. I might have been slightly tempted to save that a little longer, but okay. Um, on on they went, and what's interesting here is that. What I could have done as Shadow is used a character die to get my Palantir of Orthanc in play because um, I just don't think Shadow or Free People will use a ring to get rid of it. And I have a Palantir here that I want. I guess I really do want to get on on. They went into the pool before Free People move, and I'm not going to get that big of a benefit. And I probably want to use. Um, I'm not going to get that big of a benefit of drawing extra cards from Palantir. And I want to get, I want to use these action dice to move um, armies around and attack and things like that. So, all right, 
That was a bad idea. Don't use Palantir in this case. Better to play on on they went, exactly as Shadow did. Uh, all right, so they do, and now the hunt pool is looking worse for free people, but they keep moving, but they get a one reveal. Really nice. Um, so do you take a random? Do you... Uh, I don't know what you do here. I guess a, a, a random? Maybe you just keep holding on to Ents and just take one more corruption? Um... Okay, so they just take one more corruption. And now, um, I don't know what this giant army in Orthanc is going to do. I guess they'll go out somewhere and uh, maybe try and maybe take Lorien. Could be good. All right, so um, yeah, so this was the moment that um, free people lost the chance to muster in Lasarnok. So, you know, maybe... Maybe instead of moving that time, you could have mustered in Los Arnach, Uh, because you don't figure that Shadow has that many more red tiles to play. It's a hard call. All right, so I don't, I don't know. These units in uh, Asgiliath could potentially do something. I guess, I guess you have scouts. So, all right, um, the mouth shows up, and now. Maybe you're tempted as free people to use this army muster to to take Pilar gear. And then Shadow has to waste a ring to attack into Pilar gear or else you get to start mustering in Pilar gear. So, yeah, I think I think that's what I would do. Yeah, take Pilar gear. Oh, with only one. Okay. And then what other movement do they do? What the? They're moving out of Lorien. That is not what I would expect. Um, I, like you're threatening a military victory? If you don't... I, I would be much more tempted to just leave those units in Lorien and instead like shuffle towards Erebor or get this unit from Carrick into Old Forest Road. Um, okay. I guess we'll see. A ring attacking into Pilar gear, scouts back to Asgiliath. Okay. And then, all right, Woodland Realm, that makes sense. That's a target that could easily be attacked. Um, the thing that I don't like about moving these units out of Dimrald Dale, uh, out from Lorien into Dimrald Dale, is that um, Lorien could really become a target, and then I'm going to have to spend a die to move to, to defend it again, to move them back in. Um, all right. Shadow moves uh, its leadership around, which makes a lot of sense. Okay, how is this going to end? Corsairs of Umbar show up a little late, but so be it. Um, it's a good combat effect, and uh, let's see what happens. All right, so there and back again gets discarded for free people. That makes sense. And one eye, two more rolled, and plenty of movement for the Fellowship. So um, I think free people were very happy to see that. They, they, you know, they don't love a lot of um, corruption damage from eyes, and there's still a lot of eyes in the pool, but, um, you know, it's okay. All right, so let's see. They start by hiding. Palantir of Orthanc gets played here. Okay. Um, let's see. Elven Cloaks get played first before starting to lose people to uh, Warren of Sauron Toil. And... Um, yeah, and see, imagine, imagine in this situation where you you didn't have you didn't have the ant card, you didn't have axe and bow, and instead you had like three fewer corruption and two or three fewer um, members of the of the fellowship. Like I would I would like that a lot more um, as three people. I think there are very few tiles that matter for purposes of Gollum keeping the fellowship hidden. Um, but if you start to get into corruption trouble, you can hide or you can use Gollum's ability. Anyway, I would I would say it's still looking pretty good for free people right now. Um, all right, so Minas Tirith is getting attacked. Uh, we get a good number of hits uh, against uh, Shadow, but they're making enough progress, I think. And the stop shows up, so three stop. So I think at this point you lose Axe and Bow, you lose... Um, Legolas, and then the end card goes away. 
All right, so that is obviously good for Shadow. They're happy to see that. And um, Warren Osar uh, and Toil draws Pippin. That's the wrong thing to do. You're supposed to draw a character card. I'm sure they'll fix that. Okay, so they fix that, and the end card now finally goes away. So you end up losing the end card anyway. Um, you know, maybe you would have had a chance to play it before, but yeah, I think... I think, um, yeah, minor inaccuracy. All right, Fighting Urukai takes out um, almost... Oh, are they not going to take out um, Helm's Deep? Oh, yeah, no, they're going to take out Helm's Deep. All right, so uh, they take out Helm's Deep, and Shadow is now up to six victory points. Free people move again. They have to keep trying. And, you know, if you get an eye in that case, four, four and um, four and a reveal is not... Great, but still okay. All right, two in a reveal. They're perfectly happy with that. That's a great card. And then they are going to be able to hide. Candles of Corpses inflicts three corruption. You know, okay, I don't... Yeah, it's it's a good way for Shadow to keep cycling cards. They do have Isildur's Bane also. So, um, you know, that's nice. And then they, because of Palantir, they get to keep drawing cards. So that's good. And now... Um, Shadow musters into Orthanc. They use the mouth to um, move armies and free people hide. So it looks like this army is heading up toward the Shire, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I just don't know. They only need two more victory points after Minas Tirith falls, and you have Grand. Um, after yeah, so you can play Grand and Deadly Strife, or Grand and you know, Cruel's Death. But they do need to win next round, um, to have any hope, right? So Shadow's hope is, uh, free people don't roll enough movement, or they hit some red tiles, and then I get to ten on turn eight. So it looks like Dale can fall um, and Shire, I guess. I guess we'll see. All right. So, um, yeah, they moved They moved even more um, units here. I might have been tempted to get this uh, this army. In, uh, Sh uh, Free Shadow just made a giant army in Endwaith to make progress towards... Um, Grey Havens or the Shire, uh, I might have been tempted to. If maybe they're trying to take Grey Havens, I think that's a little risky, um, given the, that that Kirtan ships could show up. Given that um, free people still have a good amount of um, Elven muster pool, um, I think the Shire plus Dale is much easier. And if you're going for the Shire plus Dale, then I think it's easier. I guess you still have enough movement anyway over there, so it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. Okay, these are minor, minor points. All right, so let's see if free people continue to get the luck they need to move enough. Um, Shadow gets Day Without Dawn. That's a nice thing to see in case free people gets two, um, two Wills of the West. You can you can get rid of one. And um, free people get combat cards that I would say are not particularly useful. So uh, one eye. And it's interesting. Do you, do you consider an idea as as shadow allocating three eyes hoping that you might um roll more you how many action dice do you need to get your 10 victory points you need one in minas tirith two three four to attack the shire five to attack dale right one two three four five so you only need five dice to take out Dale, um, I mean, to get your 10 victory points. And that means maybe you could have five eyes. And since you have Isildur's Bane, you could potentially win that way. I don't know. I, I think probably just one makes sense. All right, so they allocate one and they roll one more. Um, and free people probably have enough movement to do it as long as they don't hit a red tile. So, all right, so they start by moving, they hit an eye. That's obviously not really what they want to see, but is probably also okay. Um, Boromir and a hobbit go away, 
and worn with sorrow and toil gets rid of the last end. It's fine. And um, free shadow is going to have enough to do it if free people use a ring. Am I seeing that correctly? So one army movement, one army movement. And then, yeah, so so actually uh, free people are safe because they don't actually have to destroy the ring this round because Shadow is not quite going to be able to get to, um, to enough victory points um, as far as I can see. I'm really surprised they're attacking Minas Tirith with an army must with an army card. I'm really surprised by that. I would have definitely used Grand there, but maybe Shadow also realizes that there's no way they can do it this round, so they're just saving Grand. Um Oh, wait a second. What? That's That's really surprising. Actually, because I, I didn't, I, I miscounted the number of dice that, that Shadow had left. So Shadow actually can, if they had used the Palantir to, where did Grand go? Oh, that, what, 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 wait, they're using Grand as a combat effect. Okay. Um, I, I think that this has to be a mistake. So let's count. If we use the Palantir to play, um, Grand, and we win the battle in Minas Tirith, which I think is reasonably likely. I have decent chances of that with Deadly Strife, knowing that Deadly Strife can definitely hit on round one, um, and I have way more leadership. So um, I take out Minas Tirith with my Palantir. Then I have three army dice. This one that that I just th that Shadow just used, plus these two more. So I have three army dice, plus I have the Mouth of Sauron. So I have four more attacks. That's what I need. I need one to move to Min Hiriath, one to move to South Arid Luin. And while I'm doing those two half movements, I'm also getting my um, South Rounds and Easterlings in position in the Vale of Karnan. And then my second, my, my, um, so those were two army dice. And then I have one more army die to attack the Shire. And then one more army muster um, from the Mouth of Sauron to take out Dale. So that's, that's 10 victory points for Shadow this round, if they had used the Palantir for, um, for Grand. But because they used an army muster to make this attack into Minas Tirith, now it is actually impossible unless they happen to redraw um, something like, no, they're, yeah, they didn't even play, oh no, they did play a character card. So if right now they redraw Ring Wraiths are abroad, then they'll be able to do it again. But they had it in hand, and I think you want to play um, Grand anyway as the combat, as the as the card effect to be able to effectively take out Minister. I don't know. Um, it is tricky. So what what is the reason why Shadow is doing this? Shadow has decided, okay, I'm not going to be able to get a military vic victory this round. You know, free people could have mustered up a whole bunch in Woodland Realm anyway and defended Dale. So like, I that that is a fair that is a fair point. You know, they're not, Shadow is not trying to rush the military win this round. They're just going for a safer military route. And in exchange, they are getting the possibility of getting a ring victory by playing Isildur's Bane with this Palantir. So um, there are, there are several threes in here. And so if free people move, or sorry, if free people hide, then they can use their Palantir to play um, Isildur's Bane, hopefully get a three, and then all four of these eyes turn into wins for uh, Shadow instead of free people. Um, I think the the problem with that is then shat free people just won't move again this round. They'll just wait till next round and then move. Um, so, all right, let's see how it plays out. Sorry for that long digression and analysis. All right, so uh, Shadow, what's going on right now is Shadow has attacked Minas Tirith using an army die and has played Grand as the card effect um, to make that combat safe. And um, they each get one hit. And um, free people now hid. And then Shadow did play Isildur's Bane. And they got a three. 
And now, um, if free people move again and they get an eye, they will lose. So um, they're mustering up in Woodland Realm. Um, Shadow is mustering up in North Rune. There's more mustering. Um, okay, so another play that I hadn't seen and that I'm just realizing now is maybe they could take Erebor. How many? There's one move to East Rune, two to Iron Hills, three to take out. One, two, three, four to attack Erebor. I, I just, yeah, they can't, they can't take Erebor that quickly. Um, so, all right. So, uh, half orcs and goblin men show up in Minas Tirith, and now um, Shadow uh, attacks into Minas Tirith, cycles Lord of the Ring, which I think makes sense, and they. Um, are going to be able to take out Minas Tirith. Yes, so Minas Tirith falls. Okay, and now Free People just passes because they don't actually have to destroy the ring this round. And um, Free People get a giant army in Dale and they move back into Lorien, which, fine, makes sense. Okay, and now the Mouth of Sauron helps armies... Um, get into position so now um shadow is really in a very strong position to be able to get 10 victory points next round we feel very sure that's going to happen this is certainly a big enough army in um north rune and vale of Karnan to take out dale even against this defense and if not they can just go around and try and walk into woodland realm so okay and um this army is certainly big enough um to take out the shire so shadow i think very likely to get to 10 victory points but the problem is um Free people can destroy the ring. So obviously Shadow is really hoping to roll at least three eyes total, to have three eyes total, because two eyes are not enough because there's still a, a um, hobbit in the fellowship. So let's see what um, free people roll. There's one eye allocated and, okay, enough rolled. So um, Shadow did roll enough. What's amazing is they, they now only have um, three attacks. Is that enough? I don't even know if that's necessarily enough attacks. All right. And now free people got um, enough movement. They can do what they want. The problem is if they don't, uh, if they don't move, then they take one corruption. That's obviously bad. Um, free people could play Smeagol Helps Nice Master to help increase the hunt pool. This is the hunt pool right now. The drawback is if Shadow got a tile drawing card, then Shadow could play a tile drawing card, um, which they do have. So as free people, what are you tempted to do? I think as free people, I might be tempted to just play Smeagol Helps Nice Master. Another thing to consider is draw a card and see what happens and then maybe draw another card and then play whatever my best card is we'll see i i think I, what i'm predicting is free people will play smeagol helps nice master and then shadow is going to play orc patrol <laughs> all right so smeagol helps nice master orc patrol oh my gosh so orc patrol drew <laughs> Super incompetent orcs. Oh, those orcs. They're so dumb. That orc patrol just totally distracted Sauron. He was like, I see them. They're at the top of the mountain. And the orc said, no, no, no. They're over here, master. They're over here, master. He's like, no, they're not. Oh, my gosh. That is that is truly sad for Shadow. So, um, you know, I think these players are playing really well. And it's just, it's just, that's the nature of, that's the nature of the game. You know, I, I, if I were Shadow, I probably would have pushed to go for Dale um, last turn, but then free people probably would have destroyed the ring. So, um, yeah, yeah, I think, I think this, this was in, in retrospect, thinking through sort of everything that happened, I think playing the Isildur's Bane and then 
getting eyes into a dangerous range and then rolling enough eyes this round was actually the better play. So I know I did a whole long analysis of, oh, look at that um, play into, you know, why didn't you play Grand? But actually playing the Isildur's Bane gave more more outs to Shadow because otherwise Shadow was in a position last round where even if they got to 10 victory points, free people had a ring, they could have moved and then everything in the pool other than this one red eye would have been i think if i'm remembering correctly would have been fine for 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 free people so um yeah so free so shadow had to play isildur's bane and hope to draw three which they did and then they put themselves in this position where eyes are now deadly for the fellowship and um they got to take a chance with orc patrol so so they that would that was better than what i would have done um and um just great plays really great plays all around uh, and this is just the luck of, of, of Mordor. Um, to be fair, uh, you know, Shadow did get a red tile earlier in this run. So, um, but, you know, all right. So <laughs> Rom Steel says, no. And then they, uh, and then they redraw an obstacle search. And now, um, free people are going to, I think at this point, they're just going to move. Would you be tempted to just draw a card, draw one card to see what you get. Because if you draw something useful, then you could play it and then move. I think given the state of the Palantir of Orthanc and how many character cards um, Shadow has been drawing, I would be, as free people, more tempted to just move right here. So let's see what they do. At this point, given that they added one good tile and Shadow just happened to remove a bad tile, um, they now have a 30% chance of losing and a 70% chance of winning. So I think Vase is going to move. Let's see what happens. Do they manage to destroy the ring? Man, guys, this has been a wonderful series. What an incredible match that has been played by these two players for third place in the War of the Ring 2022 World Tournament. I'm super impressed. It's been a pleasure. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Smeagol helps nice master. All right. So the ring is destroyed. Vase had a 70% chair chance there when it came down to it in the very last moment, but it really was a balanced game throughout. I think everybody played really well. Um, it was a great, it was just a great game. So let's see if there's anything, um, anything final that they want to say. Um, yeah. Yeah, thank you to both of the players for letting me cast these. I really thought that um, it was going to end after two because they only sent me the second log and they gave absolutely no hint that there was going to be a third game. Uh, so this was really a pleasure for me. And um, yeah, and there we go. So congratulations to Vase for third place. Uh, congratulations to Rom Steel for fourth place. Very well played games by everybody. This was a pleasure. I look forward to um, playing the tournament next year with everyone. It's going to start up in January. We're going to take um, take registrations again starting in January, and we'll we'll do this all again. If you have um, feedback on the tournament, please um, message me anytime. If you're a new player, check out the Discord. I'll continue to do videos and. Um, and uh, share my, my thoughts. So thanks so much for watching. Have a good rest of the day.